Hello everybody! I am not dead! I just haven't put out anything in a while. Um, now, the season 3 finale of the show with no name was a review of the show Free and Free Eternal Summer. And um, the dub for uh, Free Eternal Summer, the second season, is going to be released supposedly this year. If I had to guess, it would probably be, be this summer. Now, that is uh, now it's going to be um, dubbed by Funimation, who do most all the um, dubbing for things that are released in North America. And I'm sure some of you might be wondering what exactly I think about what the cast for the dub is going to be, since I show that I really do love this show a lot. Um, well, I didn't think I was that um, qualified to really talk about it because I didn't know the voice actors too well, but since then, I have watched... A lot of animes, like a lot of anime animes, and pretty much all of them were dubbed over by Funimation, so I know a little bit more about them. And uh, here are my two cents. Um, I'm going to give what they gave, what I think about that actor, and who I would have picked if I was the casting director. Um, and sometimes they're not different, which is odd. Um, I've seen a lot of people saying that this is a very poor cast, a poorly casted, um, dub cast. Um, I'll give you my thoughts about it, um, on a need-to-know basis. Alright, first off is Johnny Young Bosch as Makoto Tachibana. Now, to be completely honest with you, I seriously haven't seen that much from this guy, which is odd considering the fact that he's a very, very famous actor, but I guess it's just luck of the draw. Um, I have seen Code Geass, but I saw the subtitled version. I have seen clips of his performance on uh, as Lelouch, which I thought was pretty good. Um, not entirely sure why they chose this guy to play Makoto, to be completely honest. From what I've heard, his performance is, I don't know, a little intense for the role. If I were picking, I would probably give this one to Christopher Bevins, and it is entirely likely that you might not have heard this guy at all. I have only really heard him in one thing, and that is Yogi from Carnival, but that might be the most likable performance of its kind I have ever heard in an anime in my entire life. I think that this would be like an absolute slam dunk to get this guy to play Makoto. Uh, as for Johnny Young Bosch, um, I, again, with a lot of these things, I don't really know these actors extremely well. I might have seen them in a few things, so I can't pass too harsh of a judgment, but let's just hope he pulls through, because Makoto's a very interesting, very likable character, and I hope that it's represented very well in the dub. Alright, next up is arguably the main character of the entire show, Haruka Nanase, and slated to play him is Todd Haberkorn. I don't know if he, I'm saying his name right. I don't know if I'm saying any of these characters, people's names right. Um, it's definitely an odd choice, not the oddest, um, we'll get to that later, but it's, I, I, I'm not sure. Like, um, I'm not going to say that Todd can't do drama. He clearly can, and he has. Like, stuff, like his work in Future Diary, and stuff, even something like Death a Kid. But all of his really, like, famous, likable, like, iconic roles are of, like, huge dorks. And in many respects, Haruka is the biggest dork on the entire show, but it's just not exactly the personality type he was, like, made to play. Um, I'm pretty sure, I'm gonna guess he's gonna go for a, uh, rather, um, Akise from Future Diary thing the entire time. If, now this was probably the second hardest person for me to actually come up with a, a actor to play as. Now if I was in charge of picking the casting, for some reason the name that keeps popping up into my head is Chris Patton. Now when I first thought of this I thought it was weird since I really hadn't heard too much from the guy. But then I saw Full Metal Panic. And let me tell you, Sosuke Sagara as Haru would be absolutely wonderful. I thought, I think that would be a really good fit. Um, again, we'll have to wait and see for how um, um, Todd fares on the dub. Alright, next up is Greg Eris as Nagisa Hazuki. I probably think that this is the, the best person they could have picked for the role. Um, Greg is very good at playing younger sounding characters. However... It's not, it wouldn't fit, and I'm pretty sure they're not going to do it, but part of me is secretly hoping that it goes more of a Gareki from Carnival kind of voice, because it was a lot, because it actually allows him to act a lot more, and let's be completely brutally honest here, it would, it's a lot less annoying at times, but I do feel like um, he was a very good fit for this part. I would not change it if I was the one in charge of the casting. 
And then we got J. Michael Tatum as Rei Ryugazaki. Now, I mainly know him for roles such as um, Gekido from Soul Eater or Scar from Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood, so the idea of him playing Rei, I'm gonna be completely honest, is a little trippy, but I'm not that worried because Rei is not this subtle, nuanced character that's really easy to get wrong because there's just so many complexities to him. He's the token dork. I really don't think he'd be that hard to pull off. And if the blooper reel from the Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood dub is to be believed, J. Michael Tatum is actually kind of goofy in real life. But if we're on the subject of putting my best foot forward, this is the one I would have given to Todd. Because these, this is the role that Todd Habercorn was just born to play. I think that that actually would have been a really, really excellent fit. Alright, and to interrupt this male-dominated video, let's also talk about Go Matsoka. Now the person they got picked to uh, do her is Jamie Marchie. And the thing that I mostly know her from is one of the gun girls, I believe Liz... Uh, from Soul Eater. I really do like this girl's voice. I really love like the no-nonsense edge she has the entire time. Like, this girl is really, really funny. Um, but I'm sorry. If I was the one doing the casting, I think I would have picked Caitlin Glass because it's kind of hard in any situation to compete with Ring Ray. I would have picked Caitlin Glass, but I also would have had some competition from people like Jamie Marchi, Laura Bailey, Lucy Christian, Allison Keith. There is no shortage of very talented, very funny women over at Funimation Studios. Um, I do think that she'll do a very good job at, ca at capturing the sort of take charge attitude that makes Go so lovable. Next up is Vic Mignogna as Rin. Now you guys all know that I love Rin from Free Eternal Summer so much. Now you're probably wondering what I think about this. Plus when I first heard it, I had absolutely no idea what they were thinking. Because I mostly, almost actually scratched that, I exclusively knew Vic Mignogna as Edward from Full, Full Metal Alchemist and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. But um, then I decided to look up more stuff he was in, and I saw shows like Vampire Night and Full Metal Panic and Utawera Romano. It definitely made it very clear that he can play older sounding characters. But one, the one show that completely set me at ease is Air. If he gives a performance as good as the one in Air for free Eternal Summer, that we have nothing to worry about. Actually, um, Vic Mignogna as Rin makes sense more and more the longer that I think about it, which I never thought would actually be the case. There were a lot of people who went into a hissy fit about it. They're all stupid. Um, but I think he's going to do a really good job. This I would not change at all. And now we got Ian Sinclair as Sosuke Yamazaki. This is the, out of all the casting here, this is the one that makes the least sense to me. I really haven't heard too much from Ian Sinclair, but every single, almost every single one I, of his roles that I've heard is really, really goofy, and I wouldn't mind so much if if they didn't cast him as probably the least goofy character on the entire show. Um, I originally thought his voice sounded way, way too old for it. Actually, most of them do, but with Ian Sinclair, it's actually a little bit more noticeable. But then I saw Legend, of, a little bit of Legend of the Legendary Heroes, and he can play younger sounding characters. I just, I just don't know. I don't know if exactly the voices match up, like, at all. This would, this one is the one I had the hardest time coming up with, um, for, like, who I would pick if I was doing the casting. There's actually a lot of good options, people like J. Michael Tatum or Troy Baker, but I think in the end I settled on Micah Solzad, because I, I really like the sort of, like, confidence that he has in a lot of his performances, and I really think that would match up with Sosuke very well. This is the one I'm very interested to see how it plays out, because this is the one that I just find it almost impossible to imagine actually happening in my head. And we also have Josh Grell as Aichiro Nitori. Now, I personally, personally, I think that Josh Grell is very, very well suited to this role, because he is actually pretty good at playing um, characters in their early teens, even though technically Aichiro is of his late teens, but he sounds like he's five anyway. Um, he is really funny. Like, he plays Satan in Devils of Part-Timer, and that was absolutely hilarious. However, I feel like that's not anywhere close to the performance he would give in this situation. But if I were doing the casting, this is, I'm gonna admit, this is a little, self, little bit selfish. I think I would pick Maxi Whitehead as, um, Nitori. And that's only, like, 
85% because that would involve Edward and Alphonse being friends in a different dimension. But I also do feel like um, she would give him a really good performance here. I feel like somewhere between Alphonse, Elric, and Krona is a pretty good voice for um, Nitori. Um, this is the one that I feel like my casting is a little bit less like logic-based and more just like me-based. But I think it actually would have turned out okay. And lastly, out of the nine main characters is... Jerry Jewell as Momotaro Mikoshiba. I see absolutely nothing wrong with this. Barry the Chopper as Momo makes absolutely perfect sense. They absolutely hit the nail on the head with this one. Now, when we're talking about the dub overall, um, they definitely made a lot of choices that I certainly wouldn't have made, but none of them really just seem, wow, that is so unbelievably wrong. Like, because these people all have very wide itineraries. These people have all done a lot of stuff. They're very experienced voice actors. And they definitely got a very prestigious cast for this dub. There's a lot of people who have who are proven time and time again they're really, really good at the craft. It certainly seems that they're definitely putting a lot of time, love, and energy into the dub. And I seriously can't wait for it to come out. Would I have preferred if my cast was the one that was there? Of course. But I really don't think this is a bad cast, and I'm really interested to see how the final product turns out. 